Hello. We continue today in 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 17 to 18. Now may I pray. Lord, let your word be to us uh, a fountain of truth and life. Please speak to us through it today in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue in 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 17 to 18. These people are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them, for they mouth empty boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. So the first of our two verses, verse 17, has two pictures uh, in it. Uh, springs without waters and mists driven by a storm. Uh, springs without water, imagine that you have been walking through uh, the wilderness of Israel uh, and you are tired and thirsty and before you, you know, lies a spring, a well, and before you lies that spring and you are tired and thirsty, your water bottles are empty and you arrive to be refilled and replenished, to be hydrated and the spring is empty. That is such a powerful metaphor, isn't it? But the second metaphor is also similar. Uh, mists driven by a storm. We don't pick it up quite so easily in English, but um, in Greek, the word for mists is homic clay. Uh, and it's the haze which heralds dry weather. Uh, apparently Aristotle uh, talked about that. Uh, and it's a haze which is so easily dispersed by a sharp gust of wind. And although it's a mist, it, pr it, it brings no water, no rain. It's empty. Uh, uh, and that word is used of this mist that just blows away without giving any blessing whatsoever. Peter is saying that these false teachers that he's been going on about in this chapter are like this. They are like those springs that are waterless, these mists that promise much but are truly empty. And he says, blackest darkness is reserved for them. In our 21st century uh, life, it is very easy to overlook the reality of, ju of judgment and the judgment of God. The Bible doesn't give us that option. The Bible is very clear that judgment is real, that it's coming, and for those who turn away from Christ, well, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And verse 18, Peter talks about these false teachers. They mouth empty, boastful words. Uh, and the word there has a sense of haughtiness, of pride, of arrogance. Uh, and uh, the sense of I'm right and you're wrong and you need to follow me because I have all of the truth. Uh, uh, and they mouth empty words. They are empty. They have nothing like this, this spring or this mist. They're empty. And not only are they empty, they appeal to the lustful desires of the flesh. Um, in the second century, there were Christian cults that uh, believed spirituality should be expressed uh, sexually. And here Peter is simply trying to head that off that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that they should be used to honour God, that our bodies are not separate from our souls and spirits, that we are uh, whole people. It's all connected. Uh, and so those lustful desires of the flesh, yes, they're temptations. Yes, they happen to people. But following those desires is not the will of God. Uh, Peter is very clear that those things are destructive for us. They destroy our souls. They damage our spirits. Those, uh, and yet these speakers appeal to those lustful desires, these false speakers. And it perhaps uh, helps us to identify some of the false teachers that there are around when they seek to draw us to follow ways that are not in accordance with God's word and God's teaching, with God's creation order. When people uh, try to say that, uh, that marriage is not important, that sexual relations uh, should be reserved for marriage, uh, that, that we are created as men and women to be in relationship with one another. 
when people seek to, to take us away from that biblical foundation, one has to ask the question, are these false teachers? Because the biblical teaching is so clear. And Peter goes on, these people who teach in this way with their empty boastful words, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. Now those who live in error is just a catch-all phrase for those who don't yet follow Christ. Uh, and people who are just escaping alludes to really new Christians, people who've not been a Christian long or or who, who in their Christian journey have, have not grown as Christians. And so they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. Uh, and what Peter is saying is that we need to be aware for, of one another and for one another. Some of our weaker brethren need our encouragement, our support, our, our spiritual uh, help. Uh, and there's a challenge here for us to think about how we can help one another, particularly when we identify false teachers who are, who are in danger of being so destructive for those who will follow them. Let me pray. Lord God, we pray for all those who teach us, for all of us, those who teach us your word and about you, that you by your spirit would give them the water of life, that they would speak your truth in love, that they would call us all to follow you faithfully and truly. And Lord, that you would guard us from those lustful desires of the flesh that are so destructive. You would help us to walk with Christ in holiness all the days of our life. Amen.